Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose.
Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. amen. If you're excited about Jesus, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Listen, right before uh, we have our uh, minister's motivational moment, uh, I just got something I wanted to share. Uh, Y'all know Reverend Lee Anthony Vaughn, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, Reverend Vaughn taught Bible study. Uh, was it last Wednesday? Taught last Wednesday. Did a good job. And, and just, just for the record, I want everybody to know that was his first official Bible study. And did a good job. But he said something that kind of stuck with me all week. He made mention of his MS. Yeah. And the Lord put, put it on my heart that night. And I want to share it with you today. Yeah. And this isn't, this isn't just for Reverend Vaughn. Uh -huh. This is for all of us. Don't you allow a disability yes, to limit his ability. Everybody dealing with something. We may not have a physical ailment, but we got a spiritual ailment. And even if you have a physical disability, you are not beyond the hand reach of God. God can use whomever he chooses. So we're going to stop giving credit. We're, not, we're going to stop leaning on things. If we need the walker to get around, that's one thing. <laughs> but as long as we got the Lord, we can be used for his service. So Rev, I want you to know, good job Wednesday. And for all of us that, in whatever capacity you serve God, listen, you just let the Lord use you. You do your best. And God will be satisfied with your serving. God bless you and keep you. Good morning. 
as you can see, usually every time I do five minutes and every time I preach, I come with a sheet of paper that got all my words to it. <laughs> well, today, I decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start, I'm let God do the talking, yeah. and then he's going to use me as his vessel. Yeah. So I'm not going to come using the scripture from the Bible. I'm going to come just to say, like, we as Christians have a job. Yeah. And for that job, that's just to enter into the world to bring people towards Christ. Yeah. My question is, if we stand bold in what we believe in, we have faith in God, we saw the miracles that he did for us, the things he do for us. I, my question is, why is there other Christians who are bold enough to stand believe in God, but they not go into the world to bring people towards Christ? So my mom told me that when people look at me, they see the God in me. And usually that's what they see, the God in me. Like there was a store that I went to a long time ago before COVID happened, and then it was just cash register. She was a lady, and she was like, like she saw the God in me. I didn't introduce myself or anything. She saw the God in me. And then she asked me, can I pray for her? While I was in the store trying to check out my stuff right. with my mom. And my mom has my witness. So when people see you, they should see the boldness in you, the God in you, because you got to stand up for what you believe in. It's like brushing your teeth. I've been thinking about this all week. I've been wanting to say this. It's like brushing your teeth. You buy a bar of gum. You put it in your mouth. It ain't going to do anything to your teeth. It's going to make your breath smell good. So when somebody says, say cheese, the camera's not going to smell your breath. But if you brush your teeth, your teeth going to be white. And then there's some steps to it. For a gum... You just got to unwrap it and put it in your mouth. That's how Christians just, they say they're Christians, but when they go to the world, they're not actually Christians. They reveal their actual self and they step into the world. But when you brush your teeth, you get your toothbrush. That's what Christians who step into the world knowing who the God they serve. Do you put the toothpaste on the toothbrush? When the Bible said, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then you wash that toothbrush to your teeth. And then that's what makes it white. So when people say, say cheese, your teeth going to be white. That means out there in the world, when people say, hey, I see the God in you. That's all I got to say.
our strength. We serve an almighty and all-powerful God. And if we would just 
Just take a few seconds to just think back over your lives. If, if we're here today, it's only because of the grace of God. All of us have had those hard times. Some of us have had some close calls. But thanks be to the God that we serve, who is our strength. We're here to see another day, and we ought to be thankful. Amen. Thank you, choir, for blessing us today. Amen. That, amen. You all are setting the tone for worship. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue to worship. Amen. Worship through giving, and I'm sure that you're happy to have something to give. Amen. And so at this time, we are going to give back a portion of what the Lord has given to us. Uh, we do have the uh, box up front for the power of one. Uh, ushers, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we are going to march around, if I'm not mistaken. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to yield the floor over to our ushers. When you see my smiling face, you know what time it is. It's giving time. And I smile because I'm happy. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you're happy and you know it, then your tithes and offering will surely show it. And if you give the way God say give, you will be happy and you will be blessed. For God said in his word, give and I'll give it back unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, good measures, running over. So to give to this great ministry, Simply download the Givelify app, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create your account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Go ahead and enter that credit card and billing information. Then tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Gilify app, you can mail your tithes and your offering to Greater Oak Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Zip, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. Amen. We thank God for those who gave and those who had it not. We pray that this offering be used to uh, be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Just a few quick points of emphasis before we uh, move a little higher in the service. We want to be uh, in prayer for uh, our 
country uh, uh, in the world. Um, I was looking at the news the other day, and you know they're talking about how many people have lost their lives in Haiti. Uh, we know that we've seen people uh, dealing with the flood in Tennessee, and you know we would take all day trying to mention everything going on in the world. Uh, but we know that prayer changes things. And we as God's people have what I consider to be one of the most powerful weapons there are. Yeah. And that is a direct line of communication with the Father. Yeah. And if we really believe that prayer works, we need to intercede yeah. for this land and country. We need to intercede for the world in which we live. It may look like things are out of sorts. But trust and believe God has not lost control. And while God is doing what he does, we need to be people of prayer. And trust that God will continue to be a blessing to his people. We need to trust God even when we can't trace him. Now that'll preach. Any one of y'all can, can deal with it. We got to trust him when we can't trace him because God is still in control of all things. Amen. So we're going to uh, continue to move a little higher in this worship service this morning. Uh, it's another blessed fifth Sunday. Yes, sir. Thank God for fifth Sunday. Amen. Yes, and on this morning, uh, one of our associate ministers, I'm blessed to have capable associate ministers serving here with me. Yes, and one of our ministers from, one of our ministers from, from the blood lineage. And the personal Reverend Kevin Blood will be our preacher for the hour. Amen. So after the praise team has come, the next voice that you will hear will be Reverend Kevin Blood. Y'all say a prayer for him as he comes.
songwriter said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for being with me when no one else was with me. I thank you for being by my side when I didn't have no one to comfort me. I thank you for being my doc doctor when I was sick. I thank you for being all that you are and all that you will continue to be. Because, Lord, I thank you. Uh, thank you, choir, for that, for that, who that spirit moving song. I must say, you guys are the best choir on this side of the Mississippi. And for that, we just say, Lord, thank you for blessing us with this choir. Woo. God is good. He is good all the time. Even when it seems as though he is not there, he is always there. And the good thing about it, he never breaks his promise. It is us that break our promise. He said that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And for that, we just say thank you. I would just like to say thank you. I would like to thank Pastor Cross for giving me another opportunity to speak. And I would like to thank God for giving me the strength to speak. <laughs> Before I get started, I would like to say a prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, once again, we'd just like to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Heavenly Father. Thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. And for that, we just say thank you. You kept us all week long, Heavenly Father. You protected us from all danger, seen and unseen. And for that, we just say thank you. Heavenly Father, today I stand before your humble people. I pray that you will step out in front of me and I will follow. I pray that you will give me strength and the boldness to teach and preach your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, hallelujah. This Thank morning, you, if you will, go with me to Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 21. When you find it, just say amen. And it reads, never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with one another. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For scripture says that he will take revenge and I will repay them back, says the Lord. Verse 20 says, and instead, if your enemies is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Shame, burning coals of shame on their head. And 21 reads, don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing what is good. This morning, I would like to you for a thought that my inside is ugly, just like yours. My inside is ugly, just like yours. Truth be told, that some of the meanest, nastiest, pridefulness, backbiting, 
backstabbing, gossiping, people in this world are those that are in the church. They will walk by you. They won't speak. They will form little groups and cliques and keep confusion in the church. They will be judgmental towards people. They will look down on the half nights. And they will pretend to be your friend. Yeah. Only to when you lead a president, they run back and talk about you like a dog. Yeah. And when our siblings in Christ wrongs us, uh -huh. I know that it is hard to turn the other cheek. Yeah. It is hard because we live in a world that says that if you wrong me, yeah. I must pay you back. Uh -huh. yeah. And therefore I say that my, our wrong, our inside is ugly, just like those who wronged us. So in essence, the world ways has infiltrated the church. And now I see our brothers and Christians doing whatever we can to please flesh. And when you go out of your way to please flesh, you have taken God completely out of the equation. The world says that uh, if you turn the other cheek, then you must be a coward. Yeah. Or uh, why, why you let them run over you like that? Or yeah. you scary? Or why you always have to be so nice? Yeah. Have, have anyone ever asked you that? Yeah. Have they ever asked you, but why you got to be so nice when people wrong you? Why you got to be, why you got to always let them run over you? And they ask you that because they don't understand that God is living within you. And you right. believe in the commandment that say, love thy brother as I love myself. And although they are not bad people, they are just people who are saved, but yet they struggle with sin. So they will ask you, or they will continue to ask you, or they'll say, well, if it was me, I would have did this. If it was me, I would have brought the house down. If it was me, I would have drugged them through the mud like they did me. If it was me, but you, you nice. You're a good person. God will bless you. Then you sit, like, you sit, sit back and be like, okay, well, if you know that God is going to bless me, because I did what was godly, how come you can't take your right. own advice? Yeah. So then, but they say that because they know your inside is ugly, yeah. just like this. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't see that uh, because you have God and you allow God to lead you, that when someone wrongs you, that you is not going to try your best to get them back in fact. Now, let me, let me park it right here because I don't want to get it twisted now. I'm not saying that Paul is not telling us that we should just let anybody do anything to us. Right. He's just telling us that when, yo, when someone wrongs you as a Christian, yeah. it is best for us to try to make peace yeah. because we all live in this thing together. Yeah. But those who ask you that question, they will, they will allow flesh to follow. I mean, they will allow themselves to follow the flesh. Uh -huh. yeah. And at night, they can't sleep. They, can't yeah. they toss and they turn and they plot on how they were going to get those who wronged them, how they're going to get them back. Yeah. So now they find themselves in church. But before they get out of the car, they pray to God. They say, God, would you please be with me? Uh, please give me strength not to act ungodly. But as soon as they get out the car, all they just went out the window. Because now they come in with an attitude and they don't speak. They sit right here in the sanctuary. They don't hear nothing that the preacher said because they have so much hell built inside them. And they sit back there thinking to themselves, well, I wish brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so will say something today because if they do, then it's going to be trouble in the city. But my brothers and sisters, I stand here with you today to let you know that it don't have to be that way. 
Because God, we serve a God who sleeps, who don't sleep, nor do he slumber. Uh -huh. and, and, and if we need the strength to carry on, he will always give us a way out. It's just up to us to take that way out. And so I stand here today to let you guys know that I understand your frustration. I understand your pain. I understand when someone wrongs you, you try your best not to react in an ungodly manner. Mm -hmm. But I guess it. I guess it when you can find and pastors and preachers and deacons about certain members of the church, but not realizing that they are good friends with that person. So now uh, they are biased, and when they go back and tell the story, and you were hoping they would have men their relationship, but to come find out they have twisted the story, or they have added something, or they have left out something, and therefore, the situation is no better than what it was. Yeah. And yes, leaders can get messy as well. Yeah. But I thank God that I don't follow flesh. Yeah. I thank God that I don't do or follow or try to please my flesh. Uh -huh. So, because I know that I can get down and dirty too. Yeah. I know that if you curse me, I can curse you out too. I know that I can raise hell just like you raise hell. But because I choose to follow God, I chose not to. So therefore, if it wasn't for the Lord that was on my side, help me preach it here, somebody. If it wasn't for God who was who gave me strength. If it wasn't for God who was living within me, yes, I could have treated you the same way. Uh -huh. But thanks be to God. Yeah. And here Paul, that what brings me to Romans chapter 12 because Paul is letting us know, giving us instructions on how to live amongst one another with, in peace. Yeah. How, to, how to when we use our God-given gifts if you're a leader, what he was saying, if you're a leader, then lead. If you're a singer, then sing. If you're a preacher, then preach. Because all of us bring something different to the table. But because God gave his only begotten son, the least we can do is work together for the building of the ministry. So somehow... And, and then plus he tells us as Christians, we shouldn't react when people wrong us. And that's why he say, never do evil for evil. Yeah. Do what is honorable before men. So in other words, he's saying that every negative action doesn't require a reaction. And when you go to please flesh and try to get those back who have wronged you, then as a Christian, Satan has got Satan won. Uh -huh. yeah. That was that was a trick. You know, it was a little trick bag. Yeah. Well, they wrong you. Well, I got to give them back yeah. because uh, it just makes me feel good. But that's not what Paul is saying. Yeah. So, in fact, we see that a lot today in our schools, in our communities, in our at our workplace, and even in the church. Yeah. But Paul continues to give us instructions on how we should live. Verse seventeen says. Never pay back evil with more evil. Yeah. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. It's okay to get angry. Yeah. As long as your anger doesn't turn into sin. Yeah. See, Jesus got angry when he cleared the temple of the money changers and, and those who were selling animals. Yeah. Jesus got angry when he saw religious leaders of his day being so hypocritical. But you didn't see him bring fire down from heaven to kill him. No. See, Jesus always directed his anger at the sins of others. And as a Christian, we should pay close attention to this. 
Because we often get angry when others sin. Yeah. But we seldom get angry at our own sin. Right. See, it's, it's a, uh, we have a problem when Joe and John them go out there and smoke or do whatever they do. Yeah. But you don't get upset when you sneak in the closet and, yeah. and go smoke and drink. Or whatever, because you try to hide your sin. So, Paul is telling us in evaluating ourselves that we must be honest. And we must evaluate ourselves in measuring by the faith God has given us. Therefore, we must admit when we are wrong and live honorable before men. See, See, the goal is for us to live in peace. Mm -hmm. Verse 18 says, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Now, if you read different commentaries or you read different translation of the the Bible, you will see that Paul say, if possible. And the reason why he say that because he know that not all people want peace. Some people just, some people just got hell in them. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. But for those people, he is telling us to stay uh, pray for them and just stay away. Still pray for them even though they do you wrong. Even though they call themselves, they, they just do whatever they want. Paul is just simply saying as Christians that we should <laughs> continue to pray for them. In verses 19 to 20, he said, Dear friends, never take revenge. Lead that to the righteous anger of God. For scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. So here it is. We have a God that is willing to fight our battles for us. Only thing we need to do is just have faith that he would do what he said he would do. Get out of the way and let him do him. I read a story about a young woman who is now in her early 40s. And when she was in her early teens, her uncle molested her for two straight years. And his actions literally destroyed her her teen years and most of her adult life because she started drinking, smoking, partying, uh, sleeping with multiple partners. And she started failing in high school, but she, by the grace of God, she ended up finishing high school. And she always thought that her uncle seemed as though he just moved on with his life. Yeah. And so when they would be at family function, uh, she would see him engaging with family members, laughing and talking, while she, on the other hand, trying her best to dodge him or try her best to dodge conversations with him. Yeah. And as she got older, her life continued to spiral out of control. It got to the point to where she had wanted to end her life or end her uncle's life. Until a friend, thank God for a godly friend, a friend kept on asking her to come to church. And one day she decided to go to church. And on that Sunday morning, the pastor was preaching about forgiveness. He was preaching about uh, forgiving those who have wronged you. And when you have faith in God and and put self aside and allow God to prick your heart, then that is only then when the healing process will start. Only then will those scars begin to heal. Only then will your broken heart begin to mend. And I don't know who this message is for this morning. But I know that some of y'all have had family members, church members, co-workers, 
uh, friends who have done you wrong, and you are holding on to that grudge. You are holding on to that hate. But um, I stand here to tell you that holding on to grudges isn't going to solve anything. Being predictive isn't going to stop, I mean, solve anything. Walking around like you are mad at the world isn't going to solve anything. In fact, if you try to fix it yourself, it will only make the situation worse. And that is why Paul says that never take revenge and leave the righteous anger to God, for he will fight your battle for you. And he said instead, forgive. That's pretty much what he's saying in verse 20. Forgive your enemies. Feed them when they are hungry. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on their head. And after hearing this message from this pastor, this young lady felt the Holy Spirit move within her. And she left the church seeking and went to go find her uncle. See, forgiveness doesn't mean to forget what happened. It just means that person doesn't have control over you no more. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you condone what happened to you. It just means that you have let go of that hatred that was eaten up in you. So when she found her uncle, she told him, she said, I forgive you for what you have done to me. And the uncle broke down in shame, crying, saying, saying that he had been walking around all these years with this guilt. And, and he was truly sorry for what he done to her years ago. And he said that a burden has been lifted from me. See, my brothers and sisters, that's the power of forgiveness. It's not just to help you, but to help the other person. See, Jesus forgave those that dragged him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He forgave those that whipped him like an animal. He forgave those that put a crown of thorn on his head and mocked him, calling him the king of the Jews. He forgave those that nailed him to the cross and hung him high. And how do I know that he forgave him? Because he said, Father, please forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then the enemy thought they had won. They thought it was finished. But Lord, they just didn't know that was just the beginning. Because on Sunday morning, he rose with all power. Sunday morning, he rose with the, with the power to forgive and the strength to do whatever he can. And my friends, my brothers and sisters, that is what the power of forgiveness would do. It will end your old life and start a new one. Now, she could have acted ugly just like her uncle. She could have acted in a way that would have destroyed even the rest of her life. But because she allowed the Holy Spirit to guide her, her old life ended and new life started. And that's all I have to say this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Blood, for that wonderful message on this morning on forgiveness and teaching us how to treat our fellow man. At this time, the doors of the church are open as we stand all over the building. There may be one this morning who want to come with Christian experience with a letter or as candidate for baptism. If there be one, you can come at this time. I just want to encourage you all, don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today, for tomorrow is not promised. And if there be one that's, that's watching via Facebook Live, that's looking for a church home, we would gladly accept you here at Greater Rosa Sharon. But if Greater Rosa Sharon is not your place, we, we pray that you find a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church, and you get in fellowship. If there be one, you may come as our praise team come through song.
y'all may be seated. We see that there is none, but there's always plenty of good room in God's house. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We thank him for the message and we thank him for the messenger. Amen. Amen. We, listen, we all are ugly on the inside. <laughs> but thanks be to God. Listen, sometimes we come to church, we hear a message, and we may feel like, well, that message wasn't for me. Well, today, that message was for every one of us. We all have someone who has wronged us. You may still be mad at the schoolyard bully from 20 years ago. Listen, we got to learn to forgive. Listen, one thing that was pointed out, and I, I don't want to try to preach behind the preacher, but he said that forgiveness is not only for the person that as is forgiving the someone, but it's also liberating for the person that you forgive. So listen, ultimately, we want to forgive everyone because Jesus did say, if you want to be forgiven, then you must forgive. Come on, let's give Reverend Kevin Blood a hand for allowing the Lord to use him in a mighty way on today. We've been blessed thus far. Uh, we thank God for uh, just the opportunity to come together and assemble. Listen, uh, that message was for all of us. And whoever you are, if you got something going on on the inside, you need to turn it over to the Lord and let him fix it. I'm going to ask Kevin Blood to come on back up uh, with his final remarks and our closing prayer. Well, beloved, I would just like to say thank God for giving me the strength to stand here this morning and to uh, hopefully help someone with that message. Uh, another thing before I say a prayer, I would like to, uh, although she's not here, I would like to thank my wife for supporting me and and being the one that uh, points out my flaws. Uh, you know, you know, she said, baby, you're gonna get it. You know, but first I just want you to do this. I said, okay, I'll do it. For that, I just wanna say thank you. And thank you everyone for coming out this morning. May, I, may we please stand so we can leave this church but never its presence. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you like to say thank you. Thank you for this message this morning. Thank you for giving me strength, O oh, Heavenly Father. And as we leave today, I pray that you will continue to keep your hand of protection over us all week long. Continue to, continue to keep us and continue to doing what you are doing, what you have done, and what you are going to do. And Heavenly Father, we just pray for the families that have lost loved ones to COVID or any other diseases. And we pray that you continue to keep us, protect us from all those diseases. In Jesus' name I pray until we meet again. Amen.